Fiona, what's happening here tonight? This is Blackish Month, Glenn. It's we're doing the gala, Aurora Black Community Association annual kickoff gala. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for being here and capturing and, the moment. And you're the Grand Pooba. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'm one of them. Well, good evening, Aurora. Okay. I've been told you can do better than this. Good evening, Aurora. That's our like this beautiful, beautiful community. And thank you so much, uh, Leah, for that very kind introduction. And thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this beautiful community. Hello, everyone. Bonjour to le monde. Uh, thank you again uh, for giving me this opportunity to be here. And a very happy Black History Month. that's here today. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for, for, for being here. But I didn't know, but it's quite a surprise that I get to see my good friend, uh, a mentor to so many, uh, you know, young women in politics, but certainly to me, Dr. G, the Honorable Dr. G. Augustine. And I think we all know this, but I think it's uh, important for me to once again I recognize the fact that it is because of the relentless advocacy and the hard work of Dr. Jean Augustine back in 1995 when she worked behind the scenes, and I've heard stories, fellas, you know, she worked behind the scenes working across party lines to ensure that we celebrate Black History Month in Canada, and that's because of this incredible lady that's here today. Augustine Secondary School, and so it's wonderful once again, Jean, to see you and for you to uh, and, and always uh, to see you and to tell everyone about the leader that you are and that you continue to be. Um, before I go any further, I of course want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out and a recognition to, of course, everyone at the Aurora Black community, and of course to Fiona. Please, guys, give her a applause for Fiona. Celebrate Black History Month. I know it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, and I can tell you um, I have gone to many Black History Month events and I'm going to be going to many. This one is special. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Now, as you may know, the theme of our Black History Month this year in 2024 is called Black Excellence. And I, I heard Kevin mention the word Black Excellence earlier. I don't know if he, read, if he knew actually that is um, the theme for this year. It's a heritage to celebrate, a future to build. And throughout the month of February and all year long, we are celebrating the diverse and resilient heritage of Black Canadians. And at the same time, I think it's a really incredible opportunity for all of us to recommit ourselves in building a more equitable and a more inclusive future for Black communities. You know, as we were deciding uh, the theme for Black History Month uh, this year, we were speaking with many organizations, we were speaking with many stakeholders throughout the country, and what struck me the most was the fact that the number of incredible Black Canadians who each and every single day work tirelessly, work tirelessly to uplift their communities in our country. And that's exactly what this year's themes is all about. It's about recognizing that. And I know so many leaders in this community, uh, you know, whether it is law enforcement, law enforcement uh, from your regional police that, that's here today, but as so many leaders in the community that are actually making history every single day. It's about telling their stories. The thousands of hundreds of thousands of incredible stories of black trailblazers who have made Canada the country that it is today. 
And it's about celebrating the fact that Black history is Canadian history. But what I really love about this year's theme is not just about looking into the past and celebrating Black heritage, it's also a call to action. Black excellence, as I mentioned, a heritage to celebrate, but a future to build. And when I think about the future, like many of you, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, Kevin mentioned uh, his uh, four children. I was chatting with another uh, lady today. She talked about uh, her children. It really is about the country that we want to continue to build. And when you think about, you know, what kind of country we want to build, to me it comes down to choices. You know, I always say in Canada, diversity is a fact. But inclusion is a choice. And it is a choice that every single one of us has to recommit every single time to be able to do this work, to ensure that we are equitable, to make sure that we are supporting communities where that, 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 that to, to continue to build a Canada we can all be proud of. And it is that choice, the choice to be inclusive that we continue to make as a government when we recognize, Canada recognized, uh, to ensure that we're the first country in the world to recognize the United Nations Decade for the People of, uh, people of African Descent. And since 2018, the UN Decade has served as a roadmap, a roadmap to ensure that we acknowledge the past harms, and you, when you talk about anti-black racism, addressing that, acknowledging the work that needs to happen to combat racism, but at the same time, to ensure that we are making tangible investments in the black community. You know, when you think about the black uh, entrepreneurship fund, when you think about the black endowment fund, when you talk about supporting black uh, communities initiative, that is supporting black-led, black-serving organizations. So I think when you talk about ensuring that we celebrate Black History Month, let's acknowledge all the wonderful work that's happening in this beautiful community and to ensure that we continue to make those deliberate choices every single day to build the Canada that we all want. So on behalf of both Leah and myself, I just want to wish everyone once again a very happy Black History Month. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Campbell. And don't worry, I'm not going to make a speech. <laughs> I can't have said it all and what you've been doing, but I, but I will say as a member of parliament um, that the work the community does here, you know, Campbell spoke about the leadership from the federal government, but it's the work the community does that actually makes the difference, that makes things move forward. And we have an amazing organization here at ABC, and it's my honor to be able to introduce the president of ABC, Fiona Durant. She's a true catalyst for positive change in our community. Fiona refuses to linger in the shadows when the call for social justice and community unity arises. As the president of Aurora Black Community Association, she's been instrumental in creating a safe space for cultural connections and fostering community strength. Beyond her roles in local activism, including organizing events and advocating against racism, Fiona is a devoted mom, wife, entrepreneur, Aurora BIA Board of Director, Town of Aurora Award Committee member, and the CEO of Coconut Village Spa. And if any of you have not been there yet, go. It's amazing. <laughs> her unwavering dedication to impacting and empowering our community has garnered prestigious accolades, including the 2023 Civic Leadership Award by Operation Black Vote and the Leadership in Action Award. Fiona and her team are also proud recipients of Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee Award from the federal government, presented by MP Tony Denbine. And Tony, are you here tonight? I know you were trying to make it, but you had a family event come up. No. So MP Denbine was not able to make it, so I am representing both of us tonight. Um, there was, but the award was presented to Fiona and her team to recognize influential individuals who significantly contribute to their community. Under her leadership, the Aurora Black Community Association received the Inclusivity Award from the town of Aurora as well. Whether Fiona is running for mayor, leading the Aurora Black Community Association, or advocating for others, she embodies the spirit of someone forever on the go, armed with conviction and love. She's the epitome 
of how one individual can fundamentally shift the fabric of a community. Please join me in welcoming Fiona Duran, a dynamic force of positive action and community transformation. Amazing woman. And this is a surprise to Fiona. She thought she was just going to come up and take the mic. But um, I had spoken to our Prime Minister about Fiona before, and he um, wanted me to present a plaque to Fiona, a special message from him to Fiona. And I just want to read it to her so you can hear it as well. Um, but really, Fiona, and we all know how amazing you are. It is with great honor that I send my warmest greetings for the 2024 Black History Gala. I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to Fiona Duran was instrumental in organizing this gala, well, really the complete force behind it, and has been an inspir inspirational leader in Aurora. Fiona, I hope you take great pride in successfully organizing this gala. It's a testament to your hard work and dedication towards community service. This gala's theme, Forward Together, Forward for All, couldn't be timelier. Now is the time for us to come together, have difficult conversations, learn more about one another's challenges and celebrate resilience in the face of anguish. It's only by doing so that we can better understand the troubles people go through and understand how we can better support one another. Events such as this bring, that bring people together, empower them to share their culture, and encourage them to celebrate their heritage and are very valuable. Please accept my very best wishes, right honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Before I leave the stage, we recognize Mayor Maracas. I, as Representative Aurora of Bridges of Richmond Hill, would be remiss if I didn't mention that Mayor David West from Richmond Hill also has come to the ABC event because he knows how cool it is here. So thank you for the rest of being here. Is this on? It's on. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. This is amazing. Thank you for making time to come. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but we had sun. There was sun shining. Last year we were blazing through the winter. I was like, oh, let me not get there. If you weren't there last year, you know the drama. <laughs> but it was amazing. I do get nervous every time you put this on because something is bound to not go how you want it. And when I see people at the wrong table or can't find seats, I say, well, you know what? Somebody said, breathe, Fiona. Breathe, it's okay, breathe. And then I'm trying to make my belly not come out in this thin clothes as it is. So, thank you. In 1979, I was just being conceived in Jamaica. I was told that at two weeks old, my grandfather asked my father, my mom, to bring me to him because they heard that maybe she need help as a young mom. They took care of me. So who I know as my mom and father are my grandparents and who I know as my sister and brother, Raquel, make sure I'm on time, please, because we're already behind. Who I know as my sister and brothers are my uncles and my aunts. But my grandparents were farmers. So, they're, that, we didn't know the fancy word that's called entrepreneur, <laughs> Jamaica, but they're farmers. We probably, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm talking from my recollection, probably see a vehicle with gas, you know, a vehicle like a real car. Maybe once a week, when the big, big truck comes to pick up the grocery or the food that we cut, we plant banana, cocoa, yam, whatever, and we go on to the Maypen to sell it. And then in 1998, I found myself in October in Canada. And then I didn't know what we're coming to because our culture is when you leave your country, you should make sure you bring your children with you afterwards. But of course, my mom is here and you're illegal. It takes a long time. Before three months after being here, I was 
looking for a place to live because I didn't grow up with my mom. It just didn't work out. It's not one of us is good or bad, it just didn't work out. Before I know it, in 2000, I am pregnant and in a new country. I'm 19. My son was six months old. While I'm speaking, if we can get Courtney, Ethan, if he's here, AJ, um, Michelle, and Colin organized to come here in the meantime, please. <laughs> I was, my son was six months old and I was behind on my rent. We were living in Wilson Heights in, in Toronto and the landlord locks me out and I'm here with a six months old baby outside. The police came because that's what I know. I didn't know any other safety. I didn't have a safety net to call, no family. My family's here, but they, did. they were not my safety net. So I had to call the police. We were in the back of the car for warmth while they, the neighbor brought some milk to my baby. Before you know it, I found myself, and obviously I'm, I'm passing the boat. Before you know it, I'm in Aurora running for mayor in 2022. <laughs> Stop your transition. Last night I worked for TD and I was working from 8 p.m. to 4 p.m. every day while we planned this as a team. I work overnight. I work from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. Then I need to kind of see that my little son goes to bus at 7 and the kid is so amazing. Sometimes I pass out and he's already gone on the bus and figure it out. So this is not a little good, this is not a little thing I do so you can see me. I didn't grow up not feeling seen. I didn't grow up not feeling seen. We had the opportunity to show up every time as ourselves unapologetically. So when I show up in spaces where others might feel like they need permission, it shocks people. Who is she? I I'm just my grandfather's daughter. I'm nobody special. So when you make me feel special, you are making yourself an excuse why you're not getting involved. But I'm not special. I just get up every day and know what my grandfather taught me, what community is. When we dig the yam and we bag the banana and we give it out, it's just giving. We grow in giving. That's what we grow. So this is my giving to community. <coughs> When I brought Jean Augustine to Aurora for the first time, and thanks to the town and the mayor and the staff and everybody that makes the deputation that we could celebrate Aurora here for the first time, I never dreamed that it would be the person who made Black History happen. And you, you don't think about those things. And you take them for granted. Once I see the people that are ready to stand, then I'll stop. So I hope they could start standing so I would know. And then I make a phone call. Then I was invited by Mr. Stranick's team to come to is, I'm going to say this wrong, but it's Coalition for Economic... Um, economic Charter. Economic Charter. Economic Charter of Rights. Economic Charter of Rights. And then he said, give me a call. But I was nervous, I would not call him. And the reason why I would not call him, when people of his status, I don't know, I don't ever want to go for, for any other motive. So I didn't, and I said to a friend, I would love for him to be at the gala. And the person said, call him. Leah, and I said, Leah, no, I'm not going to call him. I'll hide behind an email, and then I send it to Cynthia. And how can we get the, 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 the car right in here? Is there any way to get it in here? I would love the car right here, because you need to see before anything else happens. Oh, it can't pass through the door? Oh, I hear that it can't pass through the gate? Oh, my goodness. Then, next thing you know, I just called him to say I would like for you to stand up as we honor two of our communities member because we decided to give out the Community Builder Award in Aurora every year in the name of Dr. Jane Augustine. Because you cannot want change while you sit down and criticize it. It's about getting up and doing, up, doing it wrong, making a mistake and just keep doing it. And I'm sure you guys all know what that is. So I would love for you, Mr. Stronach to come and stand with Ms. Dr. Jean Augustine and I as we honor these two people in the community. And I want to, these, my son and another amazing entrepreneur, those are two black entrepreneurs, and because of funds donated by association like New Roads and Dr. Pasha and everybody else that you saw here, 
they can, we can give them $1,000 each grant to apply towards their business. You might, you might think that's not enough, but when I was opening my business, I could not find the $900 I need to incorporate my business. And so if you want us to step up professional and good, then we want to do that. We want to put money in, in, in our youth to follow their vision. So Raquel, do your thing. I just want to thank you guys so much again. To TD Bank, you've sponsored us every year since we started. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. I work with the bank, and I don't promote any bank or anything, but what drew me to TD when I was looking for an opportunity to do something that I love but to make the extra money is a community involvement. So thank you for being here today. So I'm going to pass the mic to Dr. Jean Augustine. I'm going to bring up Colin and um, Colin Officer. Colin, you just changed your title, you know. What title? <laughs> title? We have one title? A patwa, so, 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 from time to time, I'm, I'm, I'm bilingual. For the record, where's your preaching? I'm bilingual. Where's your preaching Catholic school board? Can your preaching Catholic school board stand, please? And your preaching district school board, can you stand, please? Where are they? So, I have to tell you a joke. I was applying for a course on the, on the Catholic school board, and they were, you know how they say, what's your mother tongue? And I'm like, Patois is not going to hunt it. I have a screenshot. Patois is now on the list of everything. <laughs> Patois is now an official language in Canada on the school board. Go look it up. So I'm going to pass them. I'm going to ask these. You tell me what to do next. And tell me what to do next so we can bring up these uh, representatives and all of them. Or we do, you know what? Why don't we knock them up on the stairs? Let's stay here. Yeah, let's do right here. So, come on over, Mr. Strata, please, and Dr. Augustine. And I'm going to just introduce, I'm going to hold one on this side. AJ, come stand aside, Dr. Augustine, and hold one of your friends, please. Yeah, I know. Anyone? Come right beside Dr. Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to give Dr. Jean Augustine, I'm going to start with this um, Dr. Jean Augustine. You'll be presenting the award, uh, the Jean Augustine Community Builder Award to Colin, since he's standing beside you. <laughs> I wanted to do the awards first because I don't like when we plan to recognize somebody and relieve them until the end when everybody's already tired and all energy, energy to applaud for them. So you understand, is that okay? Yes. Mrs. Trana will be presenting the awards to you, um, Mr. Gina, Mr. Michelle. And what I love is because this man builds community. He knows what it is. So I want him to give a word of what community building is. Just encourage people to get involved in community building and so the people. Thank you. Yes. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I did once a favor to the magic lady, the genie, who took the cork out, and she promised me uh, that I could choose two wishes. One says, Buck, you want to be the smartest guy in the world or the luckiest guy? I said, I want to be the luckiest guy, and I wound up in Aurora. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So pleased I am to see such a gathering at the beginning of Black History Month in Canada. It is important that we not only learn, but we teach, 
not only that we come together as community, but we ensure that black history is Canadian history, not history just for black people. I want to tell you a story. I am now going on my 87th year, uh, Frank. And uh, so, <laughs> so I lose the names of places. But I must tell you that this is a man who is part of your community who's done so much for humanity. I remember after the hurricane that struck New Orleans, and there were all these thousands of people out of homes and out of, I had to be out of the city, that you received those individuals. You didn't ask about race, about color, about religion, about nationality, but you got them all. And you built this wonderful, wonderful village. Remember the name of the place? I don't. Canada Will. Canada? Oh, Canada Will. And I bought the village for 600 people within three weeks. <laughs> and I remember being asked by Mr. Mills, who worked with you at the time, to uh, come down and help to organize uh, those communities and to speak to those people. And. Uh, I was down in that Canada, Canada Wales, Canada Villa, whatever it is, but anyway, there were all of these city people that Mr. Stronach brought into this village expecting them to grow fruits and vegetables and, and other things, and a number of them just wanted to be back on the streets of New Orleans. And I remember that week I, I spent there and your generosity and the work that you did to help these people's lives are incredible. So I'm happy that I'm able to stand with you here tonight. Your daughter was in the Parliament of Canada when I was there. And uh, so, again, what they say, so many uh, degrees of, um, of separation. And so thank you for all that you've done. I'm happy that you've been saluted here tonight, and I brought up this generosity and this giving spirit of yours because I know what it meant for so many people in difficult situations. I am really very pleased to be here. And again, Black History begins in February, but as the minister said, it carries on throughout the rest of the year. So yes, and for all what just said is amen and amen because we want them to be presented with this. Calling used to be the diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. I don't know how he got wheels to be at every event when the February comes. So thank you, Colin, for everything. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. The envelope, there's a brown envelope. If somebody didn't know where it is, we would love to have it. And this goes to you, and we'll just leave you to get your photo opportunity. Um, with, Greg, with Glenn and whomever at this point, so thank you so much. Let's give these individuals a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. 
All right, y'all know I'm a big hit. At this time, Uncle Kev wants to acknowledge one more group of people before we get to the other portion of the evening. Uh, to all the little kids that are here, everybody over here on Team Uncle Kev, I appreciate you guys coming up. Let's hear it for the kids out here tonight. Much like my daughter, you all might not understand why you're here. You might not understand, but in a few years, as you start to grow and develop, it'll all start making sense to you. All right. I know things are starting to get a little wavy for ladies and gentlemen. I too am a little famished.